Hola, welcome to Butterfly Spanish. Bienvenidos a Butterfly Spanish. Me llamo Ana y en la clase de hoy vamos a aprender the double negatives in Spanish. La doble negación. Sí, in Spanish we call it la doble negación. And what do I mean by that? Okay, just imagine as if, as if you were saying, I do not like nothing. Uh, it's like kind of strange for you because you are probably an English native speaker. But if you were a Spanish speaker, that's appropriate, that's correct, and that's how you say it. So for instance, when you say, I do not know anything, you would say in Spanish, no sé nada. I don't know, mm, let's say nothing, but it's not really nothing. It's like you're saying anything. It's just the way we say it, it's nothing, but it's appropriate, it's correct. No sé nada. No sé nada. Another, we're saying no and nada, like no and nothing. That's why they call it double negation. No me gusta nada. I do not like anything. It's as if you were saying I do, I do not like nothing. No me gusta nada. Oh, no vi a nadie. I didn't see anybody. No vi a nadie. It's a way of negating it too. Do doubly. Double time. <laughs> doubly. <laughs> okay. Um, I do not have anything. I do not have anything. I do not have money. I do not have food. I do not have, I do not have anything to eat. No tengo nada. No tengo nada de dinero. Money, dinero, l'argent. De comer, de comida, nada de comida. Open my fridge, abres mi refri, you wanna cry. <laughs> no tengo nada de comida. Mm, that's just an example. No, it's not my case. I have lots of avocados and beans and stuff. Um, muy bien. Let's start. First, I showed you what is the double negation. It's like negating, a, negating something twice. Some people say it's a way of affirming thing, right? So because if I say, uh, no sé nada. If you think deeply about it, it's as if, if I say I know everything because I no sé nada. It's it's a little bit of a strange construction, but it's appropriate and it's correct. So let's start with more examples because in this lesson I'm going to show you not only the double negatives that are useful, but that are very very like they they are just a few. I'm going to show you more ways to negate something and maybe negate it double time or maybe just negate something just say no in different ways of saying of negating something muy bien let's start with the first example i put on the board puse en el pizarrón para entender un poco más to understand more muy bien i'll introduce you to david camarón no david camarón is my friend and David Cameron come muchas frutas y verduras. David Cameron eats lots of fruits and vegetables. That's why his cheeks are kind of chubby and pinky. They, they, are, they are red because David Cameron eats a lot of fruits and vegetables. That's right. He looks healthy and his cheeks even look like healthy, right? Like you want to uh, squish them. Um, muy bien. How do we say, I don't know, you see, David Camarón doesn't look that healthy. It actually looks a little bit off. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't eat lots of fruits and vegetables. How do we make it negative? Oh, well, we just add an no, no. Where do we add the no. ¿Dónde ponemos el no? ¿Dónde lo vamos a poner? Ah. Lo vamos a poner antes del verbo y después del sujeto, después del nombre. Antes del verbo, before the verb, and after the subject or after the name. And where is our name and where is our verb? Sujeto y verbo. Nombre y verbo. David come. Mm -mm. No, David Camarón, no. No, let me see. No come muchas frutas y verduras. 
David Camarón no come muchas frutas y verduras. De hecho, David Camarón se ve horrible. Sí, horrible. Tiene la cabeza pálido, ojeroso. Ah, seems that no durmió toda la noche. It seems that he didn't sleep all night, all the time. Maybe he needs to eat more fruits and vegetables because it's clear, muy claro, es muy claro que David Camarón no come muchas frutas y verduras. De hecho, yo creo que David Camarón, mi amigo, jamás come muchas frutas y verduras. Incluso yo creo que David Camarón nunca come frutas y verduras. I made it three, I gave you, te di tres maneras de hacer lo negativo. Una, no come. Otra, jamás come. Never, never, jamás. Jamás lo he visto comer frutas y verduras. Another, nunca, nunca, jamás. Never, never. Nunca o jamás. You can say no, nunca o jamás. Depende on qué tan dramático quieres ser. Muy bien. Ahora, vamos a seguir. If I say David Camarón, I'm talking about my friend David Camarón. But maybe I want to say it about me. Now, I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Yo sí como frutas y verduras, pero tal vez tú dices, Ana, you don't look very healthy. I don't think you eat lots of fruits and vegetables. How do you say that? Ana no come frutas y verduras. Now imagine it's you. How do you say? Yo como muchas frutas y verduras. Make it negative. Yo no como muchas frutas y verduras. Now imagine with your, you're with your friends and we're like a bunch of friends, seven friends, let's say, women and men together, your friends, and you guys all do not eat fruits and vegetables. Say, nosotros no comemos muchas frutas y verduras. Nosotros no comemos frutas y verduras. That's why we're, like, that's why uh, we have bags because we don't eat fruits and vegetables. The verb, the, the no first, is always going to be antes del verbo, before the verb, antes del verbo. No como. Yo no como. Nosotros no comemos. Ustedes no comen. And so on. El verbo comer or Caminar o correr. Yo no corro. Oh, you leave that for people running. Go run. ¿Qué va? ¿Qué va, hombre? No. Yo no como. You're going to conjugate, conjugar el verbo with the person who is the pronoun, right? The person who is talking. That's like the beautiful part of Spanish, right? That's why you're going to have so many beautiful endings. Because you're going to say, yo como, but if I were we, nosotros comemos, and etc. But it's, it's important recordar que el no va antes del verbo y después del pronombre o del nombre. El nombre es David Camarón. ¿Cuál es su pronombre? Él, porque él es un hombre como de 50 años y es él. ¿Cuál if I speak about... Uh, Hillary Clinton, el, su nombre es Hillary, su pronombre es ella, ¿correcto? Entonces, siempre va a ir, always, the no, it's always going to be after the name or the pronoun, right? Because the pronoun takes the place of the name. It's like a, like you don't want to say the name, then you put the pronoun. Y antes del verbo. Muy bien. Now, stop with that. Let's Keep going. I'm very serious today. I'm going to make a little bit of jokes. I feel I'm muy seria. Me siento muy, uh, muy seria. ¿Te gustan las frutas y las verduras? Do you like fruits and vegetables? ¿Te gustan las frutas y las verduras? Do you like fruits and vegetables? Now, if I, if I spoke of one fruit, I would say te gusta, ¿correcto? 
but because here I'm talking about plural, about lots, lots, variety. Te gustan. And you say, mm, no, coma, no me gusta. Esto es muy importante en español. I would never say, no me gustan. Very short. I would say, no, no me gustan. It's like a type of double negation. The coma is the pause. No, no me gustan las frutas y las verduras. Guacala, que asco. Ugh, frutas y verduras. Oh, no, give me some meat. ¿Te gustan? ¿Te gustan las peras? Do you like pears? Ah, uh, but you're going to say, no, no me gustan las peras. No me gustan las peras. A better way to say, remember, no. Pausa, coma. No me gustan las peras. No, no me gustan las peras. Very native speaking muscles shown to the world. No, no me gustan las peras. Aquí me faltó una. No, no me gustan las peras. La doble negación. Uh, tell me something. ¿Te gustan los pepinos? Do you like cucumbers? ¿Te gustan los pepinos? Like, uh, ¿Pepinos? No, no me gustan los pepinos. Bueno, ¿tú qué no entiendes? Te digo que no me gustan las verduras ni las frutas. No me gustan los pepinos. No, no me gustan los pepinos. And you are actually getting a little, I'm getting on your nerves. Te estoy haciendo enojar. You say, Ana, ya te dije, I already told you. No me gustan ni las peras ni los pepinos. What am I saying here? Tell me, please. I don't have neither the pears nor the cucumbers. The cucumbers? I, I do not like them. No me gustan ni las peras ni los pepinos. Neither nor. Where are you going to put this? Well, ni dos veces. Ni, ni. Ni, n-e-n-i. -N and then the fruit or whatever you're talking about. Ni las peras. Ni los pepinos. So you have two things. And before those two things, you're going to put ni, las, ni, los. Imagine, I have here las peras. Peras is a feminine noun because, among other reasons, it ends with an A. So we make it feminine in Spanish. Las, la pera. But pepino, hmm, it ends with O. Now, here it ends with S because it's a plural, right? So we add an S to make it more than one, plural. And pepino ends with O. So it takes us to the masculine world, right? Feminine ending, masculine ending. So that's why I'm saying las y los. Pay attention there. Because if you're going to say ni los peras, Ni las pepinos. Uh, no, no. Always match the article with the end of the noun, the object, ¿correcto? Por ejemplo, a mí no me gustan, I don't like, ni los televisores, ni los uh, radios. I don't like TVs and radios. Two times, twice. Ni los. Ni los, because they are masculine nouns, masculine objects. But here I'm putting a mix so you see it and, and you start understanding more. Empiezas a, a entender este mundo del español tan enigmático, muy enigmático. You can even be more dramatic and say, no me gusta ninguna. No me gusta ninguna fruta. I don't like any of the fruits. No me gusta ninguna fruta. Ninguna, any of the fruits. That's how, as if you were saying, I don't like any of fruit, any of the fruits. Like, they are just disturbing to me. Just to see them, I want to go home and run far away from those fruits. Now, if I want to say la fruta, it ends with A. It's a feminine object, a feminine noun. Un sustantivo femenino. If I want to say a, 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 a masculine noun, 
un sustantivo masculino, por ejemplo, autos, cars, automóviles, auto, short ways, un auto, un automóvil. How am I going to say? No me gusta ningún, ningún, that ends with N and the accent, el acento en la U, ninguna, porque este es femenino y ningún, porque auto es masculino. Muy bien, no me gusta ninguna, guácala. Vamos a movernos a otro escenario. En el otro escenario, yo te pregunto, I ask you, ¿conoces a David Camarón? And you're going to say, no, no lo conozco. Now you will say, sí, sí lo conozco. Oh, okay, well, there's no, then that my example will be finished there. That's what I ask you. So you can answer with a negative thing. Negative answer. Una respuesta negativa. No, no lo conozco. No lo conozco. No, pausa, no lo conozco. Pero, ¿conoces a Tamal Clooney? Hmm, no, no la conozco. Let me see. Tamal Clooney, Tamal Clooney. No, no la conozco. And you say, you can say it the way I taught you just before. ¿Sí? ¿Cómo? You're going to say, no conozco, I don't know, neither David Camarón, nor Tamal Clooney. No conozco ni a, a, always, a, y el nombre, y a David Camarón, ni a, nombre, Tamal Clooney. Means, I don't know neither David nor Tamal. Muy bien. You can even be more dramatic, or you can just say this a different way, in a different way. Lo puedes decir de una manera diferente, de una manera distinta. No conozco a ninguno de los dos. I don't know neither of them. As if you were saying, no conozco a ninguno de los dos. I don't know neither of them. Muy bien. So you see here how there are a few ways to say no, any, nothing, etc. Now, let's Let's uh, take a look at other examples. Vamos a ver otros ejemplos. And these examples are of something that could be positive that, would, that, that we make them negative. And actually, I'll tell you some people, some people find it weird. And I'll tell you why just in a second after we finish with our examples. Every time my brother comes to my house, he opens the fridge because he is always hungry. I think he's got some issues with his hungriness. Anyway, every time he comes, he op goes and like instantly, oh, la, la, opens the fridge. And he always says this. ¿No tienes algo para comer? Like, don't you have something to eat? And I say, uh, sí, frutas, verduras, no something, whatever, I'm not, like, I'm not eating all day. It's, Like, no tienes algo para comer, say sí o no, lo que sea. But sometimes he says, and this is when I say, okay, my, my brother is really, mi hermano es muy negativo. No tienes nada para comer. How negative he's making this. Don't you have nothing to eat? Now, this is not rude. He's saying like, oh, no tienes nada para comer. Don't you have nothing to eat? Like, Jesus. Oh, hombre, caray. Este hombre está quitando los cabellos, no tienes nada. You can say, no tienes algo para beber. Don't you have something to drink? Don't you have something to eat? No tienes algo, something. But what my brother is, what my brother is doing, he's actually using a very good example of double negation. So that's what I'm explaining it to you. Don't you have nothing to eat? Or don't you have nothing? to eat, to drink, to, I don't know, to, to snack on. No tienes nada para, and I have to say, oh, to ya, por favor, you have to be less negative. So you say like, just erase the no, erase the no, and say, with a capital, right? Because we're starting a, a sentence. Tienes algo para comer? 
And that's how you would make it. Next, a positive. ¿Tienes algo para comer? Do you have something to eat? Instead of saying, uh, no tienes algo para comer. But it's a very common way of saying, started with the, starting with the word no. And here you cannot say really, tienes nada para comer, because it's, you have nothing to eat. No tienes nada para comer. You can say that, but you have to say, no tienes nada para comer, and it's a statement. But you cannot ask without the no. Sorry, here I didn't try to erase this one. I tried to erase the first one. No tienes nada para comer. How would you make it a little bit positive? Hmm. Tienes algo para comer. Do you have something to eat? Or don't you have nothing to eat? No tienes nada para comer. Both, los dos, son correctos. Los dos, it's just a different approach. In fact, some people say people who start question, like giving questions like that are negative people, right? They expect a no for answer. And let's see why. Well, last time someone told me, voy a ir al cine, I'm going to the movie theater, I'm going to watch The Revenant. So they, uh, this person said, Voy a ir a ver el renacido. Voy a ir. I'm going to go. Voy a ir a ver. I'm going to go and watch the revenant. Ah, muy bien. And he said, ¿Vienes conmigo? Do you come with me? ¿Vienes conmigo? Are you coming with me? ¿Vienes conmigo? Are you coming with me? Well, actually, this would be a good question, but he didn't say that. He said, don't you want to come? No quieres venir? He made it negative. Now, not because he was expecting a no for answer. Well, I hope no. Maybe, maybe he did, right? Maybe he did. Who knows? You never know the intentions, right? So he said, no quieres venir? Don't you want to come? And I go like, no quieres venir? If it, this person is expecting me to say no, right? Because it's like starting with a no, it's like, oh, it's, it's kind of weird. Strikes extraño, se siente raro, se siente muy raro. No quieres venir? Y ahí says, no, no puedo, no puedo. Another way to say it is, vienes conmigo, vienes conmigo? Quieres venir? Quieres venir? Vienes conmigo? You can also say, no quieres venir? But sometimes, very often people find this way of negative asking, of asking negative, well, they find it negative. They find it, you expect no for an answer. When you say, no tienes nada para comer, when you open the fridge, don't you have nothing to eat? You're like, well, no, right? Because they see that I don't have anything to eat. Here is the same. No quieres venir is like saying, no quieres venir. It could also be, if you're not asking, it could be a strong statement. If, if you erase these question marks, it could be like, you don't want to come, right? You're just making, no quieres venir, and the asking question. No quieres venir? Correcto? Well, maybe we can say, vienes? Te animas? Vamos. Muy bien. Perfecto. Uh, I think I finished with my lesson. Oh, no, no, no. Before I go. Uh, these are the ones that I told you are important. It's a very common way I say, no sé, I don't know. When, you, when someone asks you a question, you can say the answer, you don't know, you say, no sé. Um, when someone, like, when you really want to say, I don't know anything about it, you, you say, no sé nada, no sé nada. Um, when you say, I don't like it, no me gusta. But when you say, I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. No me gusta nada, nada, nadita. Um, when you can say, I don't have anything. No tengo nada. For example, you can say, no tengo nada de dinero. No tengo nada de comida. I don't have any uh, of money. I have nothing for fruit. I don't have anything to eat. I don't have anything to drink. I'm going to go to the supermarket later. You can say, no tengo nada. Muy bien. That's kind of the double negatives. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. And if you like my lesson, si te gustó mi clase, 
suscríbete a mi canal, subscribe to my channel, donate to my channel, uh, and just send me a comment and ask your questions. I'll be uh, fast. I'll try to be fast um, to reply. Uh, have a good night. Have a good day. Depends on what time, uh, your time. My time right now is night. So good night. Adios, buenas noches, y nos vemos pronto.